Wow, guys, that's great fun. Hey, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome to the Tompia YouTube channel, and this is the Boss RE2. You may think that this is just another, another very simply built Boss Compact, but I promise you that it's quite a complex pedal and it can do a lot of things. And therefore, I will talk about the features of this pedal, about a little bit about the history of this pedal. And secondly, I'm going to show you a couple of sounds which I came up with while messing around with this pedal myself. Now, before we start, there's one thing which I really dislike about all YouTube videos and actually also about this YouTube video, which is you being dependent on what I do here. Because maybe you have a certain setting in your mind, maybe you want to try it with a certain style of playing, you cannot do it. And that's why I highly recommend you to click this link above my head, which will lead you to www.tompia.com. Tompedia is an interactive online gear demo player which allows you to test drive this pedal and many more by tweaking knobs, selecting a playing style, selecting pickups, guitar, everything you would like so it kind of feels as if you would hold the pedal in your hands. The only difference is that you can even compare it to hundreds of other pedals and I highly doubt that you have that many pedals at home. Alright, so the Boss RE2 was actually heavily inspired by the original Roland RE201. Roland and Boss are kind of the same company. However, the original RE201 was manufactured from the mid-70s to the end of the 80s. It's kind of a very big unit, not only used for guitar, but for all different sorts of uh, sounds. And there were a couple of very known artists who used the RE201, uh, Kiss, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, Bob Marley, right, just to name a few. So actually um, quite a popular effect unit. However, if you want to get one of those, you will quickly realize that it's not only outdated format-wise, it's kind of a big rack unit, right, um, but that it also is pretty expensive. And that may be one of the reasons why roughly 15 years ago, Boss released the RE20, which is smaller than the original RE201, um, which also does have, I think, 12 modes and even more knobs than this one, but also like eats up much space on your pedal board and doesn't even necessarily have more kind of sound options than this one, while it's still pretty big. And now we are here in 2022, and this is the next step of the evolution, I would say. The Boss RE2 is just as big as any other Boss stump box, so it's perfectly fine to use on your pedal board, doesn't eat up much space, it's also working with just usual, usual uh, 9 volt PSA adapter or battery um, while still containing a huge load of sounds. And even on this compact stump box these sounds are highly adjustable due to these dual concentric knobs. So the parameters that we can control with these knobs are echo and reverb obviously as you would expect it from the pedal. We do have intensity, which is kind of the same as mix. We also have tone, which in this case is treble and bass summed up in just one tone knob. Then we also have the repeat rate, which is the speed and wow and flutter. So everything kind of obvious, you may have seen that before on other pedals, except for wow and flutter. What does that mean? To understand that, we gotta look back to the RE201 because in that unit you do have real tape. And the thing with real tape is that it sounds different depending on how old it, that is. And that's kind of what the Warren Flutter knob here tries to emulate, the age of the tape, because it does influence the sound quite a lot. Now the mode knob is something which I recommend you to just mess around with until you find the modes which you like the most. What it does is it actually recreates kind of the sounds of different combinations of tape heads. Because in the RE201 we do have a total number of four tape heads and you can switch some of them on, some of them off, and by that get different combinations. And that's exactly what the mode knob on this pedal is trying to emulate. Other than that it's worth mentioning that you can connect an expression pedal to this unit, you can also run it in stereo, and last but not least you can, it does have a tap tempo function which you can use by pushing down the foot switch until this light becomes green and then you just gotta push it down um, in 
the tempo that you want to have. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's my tempo. Now we're just going to push it down again until the light becomes red and it has adapted to the desired tempo. Alright, that's enough now about this pedal in theory. Let's actually play with it a little bit. So I put all the knobs to like 30% um, and just quickly go through the different modes because I think because I think it's worth um, to hear all of them. So first mode, and I'm not gonna play any notes, I'm just gonna play a progressive pattern here. So Now the main difference I realized between these modes is that from mode 5 on the reverb feels more intense and almost adds something which kind of sounds like a shimmer on top. So that's something I would prefer when I play chords. However, if I play single note lines in funk or styles like that, then I guess um, the first four modes would sound great. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to first try to find a sound which I like for... Um, chord playing, so I'm going to play a very simple raggy rhythm, and then secondly I will go for a sound which I think sounds great on funk. So let's go with the chord playing first, let me start on mode 5. Well, sounds pretty great right away, but Let's add a little bit more of that reverb and try out the modes because I really like how it sounds. Getting very intense here. Um, okay, I want to have a little bit more of that saturation, which I'm likely going to achieve with the tone knob. And that's great, you can really feel the saturation. It almost feels like a, slight, like a compressor pedal, slightly. I'm gonna mess around a little bit with the wow and flutter just to see how the tape age affects my sound here. on and on and on it's kind of a great sound now a little bit too intense everything so let me turn down everything just slightly uh, especially I guess the uh, intensity is what I need to turn down here so let me play kind of like that standard reggae rhythm here sound and that's what I really like about this pedal um, in the end because in, in the beginning I was kind of playing that typical delay you know a pedal kind of thing which shows how crazy you can get with such a pedal 
and that wasn't even all the craziness which is in that pedal but anyway that was kind of you know just playing around and that's things that you can do in a guitar solo when you're on a live show or something but that's not something that you will write in, in using your songwriting you know and the pedal can do kind of both of these things it can do very musical sounds it can go nuts so it's kind of a very flexible pedal um which you will certainly uh, which will certainly have a say on your pedal board if you get it now let's try another mode um, and focus a little more on single note lines this time so let's go for like let's start from mode one uh, again i'm going to decrease now all the param parameters again and start from scratch here <laughs> And you can immediately hear that this mode, mode sounds completely different. The reverb is less intense. It doesn't add that kind of uh, shimmer, which I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, it is there, you can still feel it, but it's very, very decent in the background. Let me increase the reverb a little bit because I like reverb. Right, and it still sounds how it sounds. So it became a little more intense when I just turn it in, but it's not that you can hear reverb all over the place now and so i'd say let's go for a little bit more tone so again a little bit more saturation um, intensity we can also just add a tad um, and again flutter wow and flutter just like saying that so much wow and flutter uh, sounds yummy <laughs> fun to play with it. I'm not even a fun guitar player or anything close like that to that, you know. I'm just a metal guy and suddenly enjoy playing funk so much because it's so great with that pedal, so it's so easy to use. It doesn't have so many sounds, but you don't have to care about, you know, different tube pads and all of that. Just gotta, you know, have a certain feel and vision of what tone you want to have, of how much saturation you want to have, you know, how much, how intense you want to have the reverb and all of these things. And that's pretty much it. And then you can go from very decent, very musical, just background effect to total reverb and delay madness here with that pedal. Everything in that small format, perfectly fine for every pedal board, right? Perfectly easy to use. So it's just a great pedal. Um, I can definitely recommend you to check it out. Perhaps on Tompedia, again, go to that web page and you will be able to do all the things I did here and much more with that pedal from anywhere in the world, right? That's it. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and hopefully we will see you again next time. See you folks. Bye.